Marshall New York Comic Con panel 2019. Uh, how are you folks feeling tonight? Great, 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 great. God, what a phenomenal convention for comic books. Just every, oh no, this is happening now? Never mind, I'm going to adjust on the fly. Ready? Nope, now it's over. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say it's amazing to walk around the Jacob Javits Center and see nothing but comic books. This is a convention that is definitely solely focused on comic books. No TV shows, no movies, no t-shirt companies, no food trucks, no like micro loans, no. <laughs> Just the comic books, which I love. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who don't know, who, who here has ever been to a taping of the George Lucas talk show before? Okay. Okay, good percentage. Very surprised at the overlap between people who go see a dorky comedy show once a month and people who go to a comic convention once a year are almost a perfect circle. <laughs> Full overlap. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, George Lucas, of course, uh, the world's most successful retired filmmaker, uh, has spent the last five years self-financing a series of test shows. Uh, no network has bought yet. But uh, the streaming landscape, you know, maybe Disney could come back and knock it. Uh, but of course, George wants to move into a format that allows him to do the thing he likes doing the most, uh, speaking to human beings. <laughs> Famously his comfort zone. <laughs> so really, let's get into the nitty gritty. The more emotions, the better. <laughs> uh, so that's what we do, and I'm his announcer. I don't want to keep you folks waiting anymore. You know the deal. Laugh really hard if nothing funny happens. Clap really loud if nothing exciting happens. And uh, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll find some exciting magic here tonight. I don't know. It's two hours after the floor of the convention center. <laughs> <laughs> Anything could happen. <laughs> uh, so without further ado, let's, let's get this thing started. Let's play the video. Uh, I make everything more popular, uh, and, and 
that was certainly no exception. Yep. And uh, we've got a lot to get to. We've got a lot of things to give away. Did everyone get your Young Indiana Jones Chronicles trading cards? <laughs> there are extra packets on the empty seats. <laughs> Please take them. I don't want to leave them for people to clean up afterwards. Uh, I, I, please take them. <laughs> I don't need them. I don't need them. Uh, we have many things to offer during this. We're, uh, pretty soon, we're, in a moment, we'll bring out our panel uh, and we'll have a QA. and I, I do want to mention a couple of things first. Uh, is Billy Dee Williams here? <laughs> Billy Dee? He might be here. I know he's in the building these days, and it, it, this is a late panel. Look, I mean, you folks laugh, but we invited him, okay? <laughs> we might show up. And, I mean, the thing is, I mean, I'm 75 and I made it. Uh, <laughs> but, even if Billy Dee doesn't stop by to say hi, we do have unopened bottles of Billy Dee Williams' 1990 cologne. <laughs> Well, there's men's aftershave and women's cologne. Hell yeah. Undeniable, that's the name of it. <laughs> and anybody who wants a spritz uh, is welcome to, to a spritz. And hey, cologne only smells better the yeah. longer it ferments. <laughs> 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 really just kidding. Because if we can't have Billy Dee, at least we can make the whole room smell. <laughs> Oh, it's leaking out. Oh, this is the kind you have to dab. You don't need a little bit. We have a lot. <laughs> Undeniable. <laughs> uh, you know, George, uh, you know, this is the first year that they have uh, tried uh, doing panels after the convention center has closed. Uh, which is a great honor for us that we get to really be the pioneers in this field. And, uh, you know, if someone asked me, what's the difference between doing a panel when the convention is open and versus when it's closed, is that uh, the ones after it's closed, they don't even bother to refill the water. <laughs> And one that is the melted remains of Thomas <laughs> So I'm feeling very special right now. <laughs> this panel is the proverbial tree on the planet of Endor that falls and no one is there to hear it. <laughs> there, there is truly no later event you could attend on a Friday night where the red competition is in. 18 and only panel across the hall. And if I may say, I don't think there's anything that they have to offer over there that you don't have to offer right now. That now, now, George, I need to uh, acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is that the smell of the night. It is so, it is so aptly made. You cannot deny. Imagine this is a title crawl. Imagine that font. 
<laughs> There's your episode nine, right there. If we didn't close the deal by the end of 2012, George, who owned Lucasfilm outright, would take a roughly $500 million hit on the sale. I can just imagine the moiety and sadness, right? You can hear it coming out of their green lips. If he was going to sell to us, there was some financial urgency to come to an agreement quickly. He knew that I was going to stand firm on the question of creative control, but it wasn't an easy thing for him to accept. And so, he reluctantly agreed to be available to consult with us at our request. I promised that we would be open to his ideas. This was not a hard promise to make. Of course, we would be open to George Lucas's ideas. But like the outlines, we would be under no obligation. No. On October 30th, 2012, George came to my office and we sat at my desk and signed an agreement for Disney to buy Lucasfilm. He was doing everything he could not to show it, but I could tell in the sound of his voice and the look in his eyes how emotional it was for him. He was signing away Star Wars, after all. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our <laughs> panel. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I think you should do. I think, uh, I think you should do what happened. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I think uh, I think we want to find out. I think we want to see them organize all the different costumes they wear for the big uh, the big uh, event at Jabba's. You know, they all pick out their little disguises. That's the scene. That's the book. Sure. The why not? Costume. Figure it out. Trying different things on. I also think there could be a very funny one because. Luke doesn't. It starts with Luke getting his hand chopped off. Right. You, were, you, were, you leaped that as an opening. I did leap that. I, that's the first shot. Is Luke getting his hand chopped off. Chopped off. Okay. Yeah. Now, what are the two things that at, at that moment? What are the two things that Luke is looking for? He's uh, looking hand. for. He's looking for his single hand. Yes, a hand. And his missing friend, whose name is Han Solo. So I think there would be a great who's on first style confusion where hand, hand, yeah, like you think there's bounty hunters going after his hand solo, and he wants to get an artificial Han Solo. Like the first, the first hand should come back and should just be a full size robot Han Solo. I, 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 I will tell you what. It. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Ike Coulter the minute this panel's done. I'm gonna throw these ideas out to him and see what he thinks. He seems like a guy who would love a late night call. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Very responsive. Yes. I can tell you. He, he really wants to hear about these, these, these matters. Yeah. Yeah. We go way back. I, think. <laughs> I bet. We, we were in Hebrew school together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Pierre, you created Why the Last, co created Why the Last Man, yes? Yes. <laughs> This is a very exciting series, and I understand, is this, develop, is this going to become a show? It, it, yes. It's been in development, right? Yeah, uh, FX is, uh, has already filmed the pilot, and we're going to start filming the proper uh, episodes in January. Oh, that's great. Start the new year, and that's not even a streamer. You're going with a, with a cable channel that has a streaming component. Uh, it does. Yeah, they've got an app. Everybody's got an app. Oh, okay. Everybody streams. CBS streams. They're the oldest, you know. I have to, well, I guess it does. I, I, I watch uh, Legion streaming sometimes, but not on an FX stream. It's always like the Canadian version of, our, of streaming, so I'm a little out of the loop on that. Well, that's okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if you're allowed to disclose, but this is like insider information. Congrats on getting this series picked up. I presume it will be in uh, episode uh, six. Uh, four, five, and six release firms. Season and one, two, three, seven, right? So maybe that kind of standard season release. I'm sure they're going to go that way. Now the premise of why the last man is that all the men drop dead, dead except for one. And his monkey. And his monkey. That's the that's the that's the money right there. <laughs> you sell a lot of monkey toys. <laughs> no, I, we have actually been pushing for Vertigo for years to do that, and they're like. They gave us a poster, and that's all we got. Back poster money is fine, but it's yeah. nothing like monkey it's not, toys. It's not like, <laughs> like you can make a beautiful dollar selling posters, and I'm not—I would be the last person to say don't sell posters. But there's a big demand for the plushie, and you, got, you can do a, for that. get a deal with Hallmark, do it itty bitty. Yeah. <laughs> get a itty bitty, get a, your Funko, get a pop of that monkey. It's a bobblehead, so you haven't sold away your action figure rights. You make a, here's the thing, yeah, with Funko Pop, you sell them, you, you make sure that the monkey is a bobblehead, so it doesn't count as an action figure. So now you still got an open deal. And if Funko wants to bid on that, but you can also go to another, you can, you can get multiple streams. But you've got a merchandise. Now, I don't, the other You're so focused on the merchandise rights. Why? Is that, is that the merchandise rights, you're so focused on it. Why? Charles, I just, I just don't see it. Charles, I need to tell you this, the comic books are an ancillary product. <laughs> I know that's a controversial thing. In the Star Wars universe, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I know that's a controversial <laughs> thing to say here at New York Comic Con, but it's the movies first. And if something happens in the comic, and then back in the day anyway, this is how it worked. If I decided that something happened in the comic didn't really happen, then that's, that's what went. Is it like that now? I don't know how it's like now. I, 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 can't make, I can't make heads or tails of how it is now, you know? Uh, it's very confusing. Now, I did a similar thing uh, to Why the Last Man when we made Return of the Jedi, which is we filmed a lot of female uh, X-Wing fighter pilots, and then I cut all of them from the movie. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of a little, it's a fun Easter egg. I don't know if we communicated it, we sort of communicated later on Tumblr when people started posting about it decades later. So at the time, I don't think it landed, but I think it really, I think it really hit home in this century. <laughs> yeah. Now, James. Yes, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> that is the most financially successful joke of all time. <laughs> and that joke, as a, as a specific, Specifically crafted joke. That joke has made more money 
because it's in all the Star Wars movies. It's, it's in some of the Indiana Jones products. It's in Radioland Murders. I put it everywhere. Every episode of the George Lucas talk show. Every episode. I have a bad feeling like this, and it's a great, you can use it in your regular life too, uh, royalty free. <laughs> and it just is whenever something bad is about to happen, you say, I, I want to hear you say it again. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, that's the way a professional delivers that joke. <laughs> now you're, I, I'm a toy of yeah. your version, this is, this is, this is James's version of Obi-Wan right here. Yeah. So you are Obi-Wan in multiple different animated versions. For 18 years now, I've voiced Obi-Wan Kenobi in various capacities. Yeah, more actually, more than Alec and Ewan combined. Way more. But that takes nothing away. They are fantastic. No, they're yeah. fucking chunks. No. <laughs> <laughs> These two hacks don't have the commitment I, I, Sir Alec was great, but he was not into it. It was a payday for him. All right, it was just a payday. All right, and I'll, I'll go on record. I like Tom Hanks' version of the Lady Killers better than I like the Alec Guinness version. <laughs> you know, it's not always. You know, uh, I want to play a couple of clips of uh, just uh, of uh, your version. So I, I'm sure everyone here is familiar, but just so we can hear it in this great room of these acoustics, uh, <laughs> there's a clip of, of uh, James doing the voice of Obi Wan Kenobi. In more than one show. <laughs> Arc Troopers, you have been selected for this task because you are the best, the elite. You all know what to do. The success of your mission is our key to a swift victory. When you get into position, send word as planned. Then, I will join you. Do you remember these lines, James? Yes, like it was yesterday. <laughs> Master, I know you don't think I'm ready for a command of my own, but I am the best pilot in the order. Chancellor Palpatine knows it. I don't know why you can't stand one. Your skills have never been in question. It is your maturity. I've argued this before, but the decision has been made. May the Force be with you, Commander. <laughs> you know your marching orders. The safety of the Duchess of Teen is of the utmost importance. The Death Watch will stop at nothing to assassinate her before she pleads her case to the Senate. The Death Watch may be backed by the Separatists, so stay sharp. R2, use your scanners to probe for any suspicious droid activity. Anything else, sir? No, that'll be all. Yes? The Duchess and her retinue requests your presence. Very well. I sense some anxiety from you about the Duchess. She couldn't be in safer hands. Yes, I know. Then why? Never mind. It's. All in the past. Oh, so you're close to her. I knew her a long time ago. Sexy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I actually believe you and I were in a room together watching that. Last yeah. Time. I was up at the ranch once, sweating as you sat behind me. Yeah. Waiting to hear. I was sweating me. because that performance was so erotically charged. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it. Obi-Wan. Uh, oh. Obi-Wan has a history with the Duchess. Oh, yes. It's all in the past, but I could tell the feelings were still alive in you. <laughs> and the micro-series, it actually, we joked, it took longer to park your car and get to the, the actual studio than to record the lines, because they were three minutes long. And I'd usually just say, Anakin, Anakin, Anakin. And that was it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap on Obi-Wan. We got it. We said it. We heard it. That's how we get deal with an actor. Uh, <laughs> capture it, and you, you're you just such a pro, and it, it's, and I don't know if people could tell, now the first one, the first clip is clearly animated, I don't know if you could tell, the second clip was also animated, <laughs> <laughs> because the animation is so good that it just looks like live action, people, people probably think, I'm assuming, I never asked for feedback, but people probably assume <laughs> that it's just that we filmed more live action Star Wars movies, because it looks so exactly real. Especially the beard and the hair, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, well, I just assumed it, was, it looked like hard like that because you were excited. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, now, 
let's see, does anyone want this toy that you want? And you'll be handed, that person can hand one out first. And you get to sign it, and you'll hand it to it. Look at me, I'm giving you direction. Yes. You don't even need to go to the booth. All right, what's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin? K-E-V-I-N? Say it like Obi-Wan. Ask like Obi-Wan. I'm sorry. Story. Did you say your name was Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, I'm going to write something on here. I'm going to put Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yes, yes. Kevin, if you want. <laughs> Oh, 
Marvel movie. Uh, they show you everything that ever happened in Marvel. Oh, that, yes, the Falcon landed. I forgot about that.
blow up your mouth, you're gonna have to go to a party city or someplace. You get them to blow it up. Is that okay? Rockwell is all about uh, the Lucas Museum of 
narrative art is uh, getting ready to open in the next couple of years in Los Angeles. I have one of the world's largest collections of our Morocco paintings, and so that's what a lot of the museum is going to be. Uh, it seems like maybe the frenzy for a Norman Rockwell picture was so that people would have things to tan the sense away from their face. Because I'm hearing a lot of talks in the moment. <laughs> All right. Looking at this from over here, it's ridiculous. You guys are just talking. It's amazing. Uh, All right, what's your question? You with the microphone. Oh, no, I don't believe there, there is a, a disagreement about this because there are people on fragrance message boards who claim that they expire within a few years. There is no expiration date on the bottles themselves. Okay. You want a prize? You asked a question. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Some other panel left this box of Star Wars books here. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, yeah. They did some ghost writing. I love that you wanted signed by a, a, a CGI character, but you don't want George Lucas to sign it. There's some markers. No, I don't want to be asked second. All right, next question. Hi, I'm wondering uh, for Zach Cherry, what character from Star Wars you would ask to do a flip? Uh, what? I'm gonna make you all suffer. <laughs> 
time by Charles and Danny. You know what they done? Great, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give you this Norman Rockwell jigsaw puzzle of laughing boy with sandwich and puppy. <laughs> So I loved the first introduction of Dark Vegan because he's near and dear to my heart as well. So Dark Vegan is, uh, well, he's similar to a character you created, George. Right, a lot of characters are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, probably, probably the introduction of Dark Vegan, I guess. But, uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, no problem. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Jack. This question is for everybody. Great. Um, you handed out these young Indiana Jones Chronicles trading cards. I was wondering if we could get like a trap going. I've got a bunch of lands in my bag. We could like do limited. But anyone would be interested in the panel? I'm sorry, what are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> this is for the Elvis. This is the Elvis joke about Magic the Gathering. Who's going to leave right. now? <laughs> <laughs> Charles were to write 
a new um, Watto book in between, who would you want to play that older Watto? What actor would you want to cast? Old Man Watto. For older, Old Man Watto. Oh, I don't know. What about Watto? Have <laughs> you not seen my performance in Attack of the Clones where I wear a little hat? I have a <laughs> Excellent. I can do anything. What about Helen Mirren? Helen Mirren? Helen Mirren, John Hirsch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right. Yes, yes. I, don't, you know, I wouldn't need an actor, I already have the full data spectrum that you need to replicate anything that you want Watto to do, any kind of, you can now do any kind of hat. At the time, that was the only kind of hat we could do. But now we can literally put you in a, in a visor, uh, you know, uh, uh, any kind of, any kind of hat. I'd love to wear a holder. Yeah. A holder. I don't know, that's a tease for something. Yeah, a Watto and a boater, that'd be a good comment. That'd be a great comment. That's a good one. Watto on the seas, right? Yeah, I think Watto would like to sing like Swanee River. Yes. Like, way, way, way. Now we found this one. Uh, Alright, come to your toy. This is a Chewbacca that wears his glasses. Why does everyone get upset that Chewbacca's wearing glasses? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Second of all, where are the rest of the holiday special co uh, copies? I'm searching for one really badly. I need one, George. Look, I don't control the back catalog now. You have to tweet at Disney telling me you want to bring masks in the and see what they do. Let's forget about it. Uh, I'm never going to forget Disney about has it. it. It's in the vault. You're done. Come get another rock club. <laughs> Uh, we have a big announcement we're going to make. We made the same announcement last year, but I think you can help make it happen, which is that uh, Star Wars Detours, which is the... Uh, this, is, this was the last big Star Wars project. I financed it. We made 39 episodes. It's a comedy animated Andrew. series. Yeah? All right, come on. <laughs> you get the uh, novelization of American Graffiti. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. Uh, you say it's all movies, no one will see. No. <laughs> all right. Huh? Okay. So detours, detours, hold on, we'll get you a prize in a second. Uh, detours, 39 episodes, Disney bought all of Star Wars and then decided they didn't want to release detours because it's too irreverent. But uh, this is by some of the, I did it with some of the guys who uh, take Robot Chicken. And they thought it would be confusing. But I think it'd be great if everyone started tweeting at Disney and begging them, begging them to put Star Wars Detours on Disney Plus. And let's just go ahead and announce that that's going to happen in 2020. If we say it at Comic Con, that get, that carries some weight, right? Uh, so just start tweeting a lot about that. Tweet at the Lucas Museum and tweet at Disney about <laughs> Star Wars Detours and how much you want to see it and how much they'll make you want to subscribe to Disney Plus. And who wanted that prize? Did somebody just gave up here. Okay, great. Here's a little. Um, this is a foam flyer of the Millennium Falcon. Here's an activity pad. Here's a bag of Star Wars confetti. <laughs> and here's some coupons for uh, free uh, Briar's ice cream. Uh, they do a dark side, light side. It's like uh, it's chocolate, vanilla, and it's, you know, you know, you get it, right? <laughs> okay. Have a copy of the book, Alphabet Squadron. I don't understand what they're doing with Star Wars. I don't know. Alphabet Squadron. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Uh, the next question, yes. Hi, uh, this question is for Water. Mmm, my kind of question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to believe that you have gout, and if you do, you should give it to me because I am also Jewish and went to Hebrew school. Okay, I got good news in that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of gout because we're right in that period where my gout from last December has run out. <laughs> And so I don't have still guilt for you, but I do in my fanny pack have lozenges. You <laughs> <laughs> said you're Jewish, so you probably need some of those. <laughs> <laughs> I've got great news. Everybody in line is going to get a rock well. Alright, we got to burn through these quick. We're almost done. Okay. okay. Um, the question is for Zach Cherry, but anybody can answer it, I guess. Um, John Favreau in, in uh, Spider-Man ripped off 
the logo for Peter Parker's high school. Can you name that high school? It's based here in New York. Uh, trivia question. I cannot and I will not. <laughs> no, I don't know. Bronx High School of Science, my alma mater. Also John's alma mater, but yes. Now, all right, for you I have a labyrinth. <laughs> Labyrinth because you produced the movie Labyrinth. <laughs> I just want to connect the dots. If I had a World War II fighter jet, I'd hand that out. Uh, go ahead, next question. This one's for George. Great. Uh, if you had to say how many shows or movies ripped you off and which ones? Oh God, you don't have time for me to read all of IMDb from 1972 on. <laughs> Every, I see my influence everywhere. Name a movie, I'll tell you how I influence that. Labyrinth. Labyrinth? Well, I produced it. <laughs> that was an easy one, I think. Come get your rock. <laughs> Rockwell and crayon and a BB-8 eraser. Oh, no. Curious case of Benjamin Button. What? Digital pets. <laughs> so, I have to ask, and this might be a bit personal, but okay. um, well, did you get a nose job? And if so, from where? I need some recommendations. Uh, I did get a nose job uh, recently from Dr. Silverstein on um, 71st and Lex. Uh, he gave me the full implant enlargement, which is why I'm looking a little more virile than you. All right. Come on, get here. Get here, Ralph. Well, I'm just going to give you the husk of that desk calendar. Next question. Right, this one's for George. When are we going to get the original cut of Star Wars on HD? Yeah, yeah, the, the original final cut of it that came out on Blu-ray and it's available. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, look through my garbage. <laughs> I really dig that beat, and you might have to go to the dump because I think they came and picked it up. Come on and get your, come on and get your activity pad and pencil. Next question. Hello, and this is for James Arnold. And what is your episode of film from Star Wars or Clone Wars? Oh boy, wow, this is a very serious question. An extremely funny show. Um, <laughs> well, my favorite would be uh, The Lawless, and it was an episode in uh, season five, and spoiler alert, I mean, it shows they've gone, canceled, brought back, so if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, I don't mean to spoil it, but where the Duchess Satine and Darth Maul meet Obi-Wan in a very special way. Yeah, it was my favorite. It was tragic, but it was wonderful, yeah. Is it all right? Is it erotic? Is it erotic? In a very special way. Well, ask George because he approves all of those things. Yeah. Very erotic. Well, question. Sorry, we're wrapping up. Sorry. <laughs> very erotic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Here, yeah, I'm just going to give you everything I have left. <laughs> There's some comments you can interrupt the sign. Does anyone on the panel have any other questions? Oh, here you want to have Lando? Billy D? I was asking if he was here. <laughs> <laughs> Really easy to disguise this whole time. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, I'm give this land over to her. She's the last question. I want to thank my panel. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank everyone for coming out to the museum. I have a box of books here. Anyone who wants a copy of Star Wars Alphabet Squadron, come right up here to the front. I want to thank everybody, and may the force be with you. <laughs>